Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and once again, we are exploring the fascinating world of fractions. We're in our math journal, uh, Unit 3, Lesson 5, and the story problem is entitled Veggie Pizzas. In a fourth grade class, small groups of students went on different field trips. The cafeteria prepared 17 veggie pizzas for the students. Since each group had a different number of students, they were given different numbers of pizzas, as shown in the diagram below. All the pizzas were the same size. So, before we get into dividing pizzas, let's read further. It says, in which group did each student have the greatest amount of veggie pizza? And then number two says, use diagrams and words to show your reasoning. You can make diagrams on the pizzas on the first page or draw your own pictures. Well, since they already provided us with some circles, let's just use these. So the uh, upper left-hand corner shows that there were four students and there were three pizzas. So that already tells me that each student got less than a whole pizza to themselves. So what I'd have to do is divide each pizza into four slices. Now, before we do that, a thing about cutting up circles. See right here, I, I drew some horizontal uh, lines. And if that was the way I divided my pizza, those pieces would not be equal, okay? Uh, the piece at the top is a lot smaller than the ones in the middle. So we want to make sure that every student gets the same amount of pizza. So when I divide a circle into fourths, I'm going to draw a vertical line like so, and a horizontal line like that. And we make four pie slices like so. Okay? Now, each student gets one slice from one of those pizzas. Okay? So, if I'm the first student, one, two, three, I get a slice from each pizza. That means I've got a total of one, two, three slices. And that's three slices from each of the three pizzas, okay? So that means that a student is going to get three-fourths of a pizza there, okay? Now let's compare that to the second scenario where there are five students uh, dividing four pieces, okay? So like we did in the previous problem, we are going to divide each pizza by the number of students, and this time it is five. Now, because 5 is an odd number, the pizzas can't be uh, divided with a vertical or horizontal line. We have to make a drawing that looks something like this. Now, again, that's freehand for you, so it's not going to be perfect. There we go. So I have divided my pizza into five slices each. And since there are five students, that means that each student gets one of the slices. One, two, three, four, like so. So each student then is going to receive four fifths of a pizza. So then you would go ahead and divide the other two groups of pizzas by the number of students, dividing seven pizzas uh, by eight students and dividing three pizzas by five students. Okay. Now, without even having to create diagrams, I can tell you uh, the number of slices each student's going to get with the remaining two groups. I just have to put the number of pizzas on the top, which would be, for this group, 7, and the number of students getting pizza, which is 8, and that would create the fraction 7 eighths. Now I could go through the trouble of drawing uh, 8 slices on each of the 7 pizzas, but it would give us the same result, because if you look up here at the top, I had three pizzas, and I had four students, and over here on the right, I had five students, four pizzas, okay? So I can determine the fractions 
just by thinking about the two numbers, okay? So this one right here, uh, five students with three pizzas, my fraction would be three-fifths. Three pizzas being divided amongst five students. So now what we have to do is we need to determine which of these fractions shows us the most, okay? So again, I might want to create some diagrams uh, separate from these, okay? Three-fifths, seven-eighths, three-fourths, and four-fifths, okay? Now, instead of taking a slice from each pizza, let's consolidate all the slices into one circle uh, picture, okay? One, two, three, four, okay? So three-fourths of a pizza, four-fifths of a pizza, seven-eighths of a pizza, and then three-fifths of a pizza, like so. Now then, we're going to go ahead and shade in the fractions. So here's three-fourths, like so. Here's four-fifths. Here's seven-eighths. Before I do that, i got to close up my circle, otherwise it's not going to fill in right. Seven-eighths. And then here's three-fifths. Okay. So now I can start to compare these fraction drawings. Okay, now I know that four-fifths, as you can see over here, is going to be bigger than three-fifths because it's got an extra slice right there. So we know that four-fifths is going to be bigger than three-fifths. Let's just write those fractions next to them so we can keep track. Okay. So... Four-fifths is bigger than three-fifths, so we knew that three-fifths can't be our answer. That's not the biggest one. And then I'm looking at three-fourths versus seven-eighths. Now, uh, eighths are twice as many as fourths, and as you can see, if I were to divide my fourths in half, I would get some eighths, like so. So if I divided my pie into eight slices, I would see that three-fourths is equivalent to six-eighths, okay? And seven-eighths down here is bigger than six-eighths, so I know that three-fourths or six-eighths is not the biggest amount, okay? So now I'm left with seven-eighths versus four-fifths. Which of those amounts is the most? Okay. Now, you could kind of go off my hand drawing and think, well, maybe one is bigger than the other. This looks bigger. But, again, I hand drew them, so they might not be 100% accurate. Like, for example, if you got to be super critical, I mean, look at this slice right here. That is not as big as, say, this one here. Okay. So there might be some confusion. So what I need to do is I need to uh, create two equivalent fractions uh, that I can compare uh, four-fifths and seven-eighths, okay? And the way that we do that is that we have to create fractions with like denominators, like denominators. So I'm going to rewrite my fractions, four-fifths and seven-eighths, okay? Now... When you have unlike denominators, the way you come up with an equivalent fraction is you have to take the denominator, that's the bottom number, here and here, and multiply both denominators together to get you a common multiple, okay? So first I'm going to use a little multiplication and multiply 8 times 5. Well I know that 8 times 5 equals 
40. Okay. So I want each of my fractions to be out of 40 parts. Okay. So now the question becomes, how do I convert 4 fifths into 40 fifths and 7 eighths into 40 fifths? Well, I'm going to take the other factor and multiply it to the denominator. So right here, I'm going to multiply 5 times 8, like so, and that gives me 40. 8 times 5 gives me 40. So what I do to the bottom number is what I need to do to the top number, okay? So I'm going to multiply 4 times 8, like I did 5 times 8. And then I'm going to multiply 7 times 5, like I did 8 times 5, okay? So 4 times 8 gives me 32. 7 times 5 gives me 35. So when I look at these two pairs of fractions, I can now see that 35 fortieths is bigger than 32 fortieths, or that 7 eighths is a bigger amount than 4 fifths. Okay, so going back to my first problem, it says in which group did each student have the greatest amount of veggie pizzas? Okay, the group that went to the wild meadow was the one that got the most. Okay, so to solve the problem, I write in this space the eight students who shared the seven pizzas got the most pizza which was seven eighths. So let's take a moment and uh, look at this problem one more time, just to sum up all the information that we've processed. So students were grouped into different groups by different numbers. They were given different amounts of pizza, and then they had to split those pizzas uh, equally amongst each group, okay? So we had to divide each pizza by the number of students. We came up with the fractions that represented the number of slices each student was going to get. We compared each uh, pizza by first consolidating the slices into their own fractions, and then first visually representing or determining uh, which amount was more. And when we got down to the final two pizzas, we used uh, uh, multiplication to create some common denominators so that we could compare uh, equivalent fractions with the same denominator that allowed us to compare the numerators okay, up at the top which allowed us to compare the most. Okay. So that was a lot of computing, a lot of thinking, a lot of processing to come up with an answer. You know, and sometimes in math, you have to do a lot in order to come up with the answer. And that doesn't mean that it's impossible. It just means that there are a lot of steps to think about. So um, this is something that uh, you and your math teacher will be discussing probably in depth uh, in class. So after you watch this video, if you still have more questions about uh, this uh, approach to finding uh, fractions, feel free to reach out to your math teacher. Otherwise, friends, we will talk again soon. Thanks.